Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. So I'm in the middle of golden week here in Japan, which means I have no work, which also means I have lots of free time. I decided to make this video because I was going through some of my Lolita accessories and items and organizing them a bit and I thought, hmm, a couple of these I'm probably never going to wear or use again and I kind of never want to purchase anything like these ever. So this video is going to be about Lolita accessories that you should avoid. And that's not to say that all kinds of these items you should avoid entirely, but I'll show you some flaws about certain kinds of them that I just personally don't like or I think that they will maybe come apart or have some issues further down the line. Alright, so let's get started. One accessory I think you should stay away from is wrist cuffs. And not all wrist cuffs, but ones with ribbons that start to fray over time. So as you can see here, the ends of the ribbon are just coming undone. They're looking a little jagged. Another example is this wrist cuff here. So ends of the ribbon are just getting a little fuzzy and over time the whole entire end of the ribbon could get frayed. What you can do if you already have some wrist cuffs like this is just take some clear nail polish and put it along where the ribbon was cut at the end and that should seal it. Or what you can do is look for some wrist cuffs when you do plan to purchase some in the future and just make sure that they have the little seal already on it or that there is something on the end or the ribbon might be tucked back into the center. One example is this wrist cuff that I'm wearing today. There's this gold piece on the end so That'll prevent any damage to the ends of the ribbon where it's been cut. And another kind that's perfectly safe to buy is one that looks like this. So we don't see the end of the ribbon. It's kind of tucked into the middle and sewn in already. Another thing that I can just never recommend buying is Lolita bags with the cheap pleathery material. So this is one of them. I have many, unfortunately, <laughs> but this was one of the bags that I bought when I first got to Japan about three years ago. So this isn't a really old bag and I'm the first owner, but if we look closely, it is damaged to high heaven. Here are the handles. Here is the back side. And one reason I just don't even purchase these bags anymore is because the material it's made with is just not sturdy. So I bought this bag for about $100 after tax and that's pretty typical for a new Lolita bag. That's the usual price range. But these bags just don't hold up over time. I think if I'm going to spend that kind of money on a bag, I'd like for it to be a little better quality. Otherwise, I could just go buy a cheaper bag or use maybe a canvas tote or get a plush bag and that's going to last a lot longer. I think a bag that is this damaged, like, I don't know, it just looks really cheap. If you haven't seen it yet, I did make a video about Honey Keg, the old and the new release, and I did talk about the bags and I will put a card up here so you can go and check out that video, but my old honey cake bag, it has definitely seen better days. So here's another one of my angelic pretty bags with the same material. This one's a bit older. I've had it for about four or five years, but there are some dents and dings on the front and the shoulder straps are just completely flaky. The material just sloughs off and I rarely wear this bag. I almost have never taken it out. I think I've worn this a grand total of like four times in my life, but that's just what this kind of material does for some of the Lolita bags. It just comes apart over time and they're just not made to last. When I was living in the States, I lived in a place that didn't have a lot of humidity. I was living in Southern California. So I don't think it's the weather to blame or me being rough to the bags. This is just something that happens, unfortunately. So if you would like to buy a Lolita bag that is good quality, these are not it. If you're looking for something cute and durable for Lolita, 
I would recommend something like this bag. This is from Angelic Pretty and the material is kind of like a plastic more so than a pleather material and it's very cute. This one's really big and spacious and I use this one almost every time I go out in Lolita. This is my go-to bag. As you can see there's not many scuffs or scratches. There's just a couple minor ones and yeah, this one is extremely sturdy. So if you can find a bag with this kind of plasticky material, that would be good. Otherwise, a plush bag would work. And Baby also made some bags that have a really good pleather material that doesn't flake or crumble. Tavo also has a lot of good bags. I know that they're about in the $20 price range, but you can get some that are shaped like books or like Boston bags, and those seem to take a heavy beating. They're pretty sturdy. For this next one, please don't attack me for this, but I would also advise against buying half bonnets. I used to love these half bonnets. They're really elegant looking. They're cute. They're very fashionable. I wanted to make bonnets a thing, but they're not that comfortable and they slide off a lot. Also storing them is pretty hard. They're fairly big and they're thin and they also kind of bend easily. So if they're not stored correctly, they could get a permanent dent in them. Um, I usually keep mine in a small box and I'm actually sitting on this box right now. <laughs> Even then, the bonnets just, they take up a lot of space and I don't know, they're just really delicate and kind of a pain. Another issue I have with half bonnets, especially from Angelic Pretty, is the material that they use for the ties. They get wrinkled really easily. So when you store them, you have to be really careful, but we can't really store them so the ribbons just hang down. When I put them away, I usually just kind of gently fold the ribbons, maybe once or twice, but even when I bought this chest chocolate one, it just came with all these wrinkles, so you have to steam them. If you love bonnets and you'd like an alternative to these flimsy half bonnets, I would recommend a full one. That will cover the back of your head and it will stay on a lot nicer. Here's a picture of one that I would recommend. And a lot of brands do carry them. Innocent World makes them as well as Baby the Star Shine Bright. And Jelly Pretty just has a couple. I would also recommend a bonnet such as one from Triple Fortune. They're very elegant and they do seem to stay in place a lot nicer. One downside is storing them. They do take up a bit more space and they are a little bit wider for a bonnet. You also can't fold them or anything like that, so you would need a bit of space if you do decide to get one from this brand. I'd also recommend getting a bonnet that has these little combs to keep it in place. So a couple years ago, Baby the Stars Shine Bright made these little elegant monarch crowns. And while they look very beautiful and elegant, these are probably the worst things that I've ever purchased. For starters, the silver one tarnishes. The color on it just fades. So that's one thing I don't like about it. The other is it's really heavy. Like, I would say this is almost a pound. Like, it's not lightweight at all. And when you have something so small and dense and when you try to put it on your head, it slides everywhere. I have never gotten these little crowns to sit on my head correctly, even with tying the ribbon and putting bobby pins in my hair and trying other ribbons. I just, I don't know. I've had no luck. I'd love to know how people get this to stay on their head because for me, it is a mystery. One of the biggest reasons I don't like this little crown is because it breaks. The little arches on here snap off very easily. So on this one, two of the six arches have broken off. And I purchased the second hand, but I noticed as soon as I took it home, where the arches meet the crown, it's very soft and malleable. They're not breaking because I'm mishandling them or anything. It's just, they're not made with a very good material. Lastly, if we look closely at the jewels on the butterfly here and on the crown, they fall out over time. 
So for those reasons, I can't recommend purchasing these little crowns at all. As cute as they are, and I know that they were popular a few years ago. I don't see them so much now. I don't know. I think the hype died down on them. And I wonder if other people had a similar experience with these. If you have, please let me know in the comments below. If Baby had like a little clip at the bottom of these crowns, or if you were able to modify it to include one of those, I think it could stay in place a lot better. But I don't know of any offhand that I could recommend. I think something like a head bow or barrette that would stay on your head a lot nicer would be better and you don't have to worry about it every three seconds like you do when you're trying to balance these on your head. The last items I'm going to be showing you, which unfortunately are also from Baby the Star Shine Bright, are their scepters. So I have the gold and the silver one. And they do have some similar problems to the crowns. If you look closely, some of the arches have also broken off. The gold one, it doesn't tarnish. I would say this one is the slightly better quality one. However, this silver one here, look how tarnished this is. I've used this a grand total of one time with a coordinate and it looks like it's been used on a daily basis. Also, when you carry these around when you go out in Lolita, they're pretty big. Like, they fit in your hand nicely, but they don't fit in a bag very well. It's going to not sit very well in whatever bag you put it in, and it's just very inconvenient. I don't like carrying these around. They're heavy, and while they look really elegant, it's not worth it. I'm sorry, like, I know that Baby still sells these, and I just hope that they're better quality than the ones that I bought a few years ago, but save your money. Don't buy these. I don't even have anything that I could give an alternative to for these. Scepters are just a pain. I love how they look, but boy, carrying them around all day, mm-mm. I hope that you found this video helpful and maybe you can keep some of these tips in mind when you make future Lolita accessory purchases. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!